What's up guys, in this episode we are finally putting the manual transmission into our car. And you can see we've got a bunch of goodies in front of us. These are all stock OEM XCD clutch parts. Um, we have a new, sur uh, it's not quite resurfaced, but it is um, really nice and shiny flywheel. Um, we have some ARP studs, um, some OEM Nissan studs, um, and that is our drive plate from the last video if you guys remember that. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is install our new pilot bearing. This comes in the clutch kit with the rest of this clutch stuff. Um, and basically this is just going to sit where the uh, input shaft on our transmission is it kind of holds it in place and it is made out of bronze um, so if anything wears away it's going to be this not our steel input shaft um, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to coat it with a little bit of pennzoil um, it doesn't have to be pennzoil just any oil but that's what i had on hand um, when we push it in as well as when we put the uh, tip of the input shaft in um, that way it is you know nice and lubed and there's not too much friction in there the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, bolt our flywheel to it. Um, we have the drive plate that goes on top of that. Um, and then we have these bolts and everything for our clutch kit. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And then after this, guys, we're going to finally be able to install our transmission. All right, since it's a little bit difficult to film underneath the Z when it's on jack stands like this, um, and it is a little bit dark, so I can't really shine light under there too easily. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just kind of tell you guys what we're going to do outside. Um, so what we have is our oil here and we have our throttle bearing and this is a 15 millimeter socket. It doesn't have to be a deep socket, it just happens to be what I use the most on this car. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this oil and put on the inside of uh, the... so our crankshaft has a hole that this goes into. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen it. Um, and basically just put oil on the inside of that and then we're going to put a little bit on the outside of this just because. Um, and then we're going to take this and that and we're just going to kind of slowly hammer it into that hole. Uh, basically we're just going to press it in until it doesn't really want to go too much further. Um, there is a fillet uh, or kind of like a slope on the uh, crankshaft itself. Um, so once it kind of reaches the end of that fillet, um, you're pretty much good at that point. And there is a tiny little lip at the back, um, so you don't want to push it in too far. Um, but it, it will kind of resist a little bit instead of going all the way in. So we're going to go ahead and oil this up. I've got a nice little just glove right here, that way I don't get my hands oily. Um, I'm just going to oil the inside of the crankshaft, um, and then we're just going to push this in with a nice little hammer, just very light taps, and we're going to make sure it goes in nice and straight. Alright guys, now as always you want to clean the surface before you put the pilot bearing in, I forgot to tell you that earlier, but I went ahead and cleaned it already beforehand. I mean, as you can see we have our new pilot bearing in there, it's nice and snug, oops, sorry, there we go. Uh, it's nice and snug, um, and it fit right in. Uh, that 15 millimeter, it slipped off a little bit, and it kind of made a few indentations around the edge. Um, just make sure to reposition it before every hit, you know. It's better to go slow and not mess up than to go fast and mess up. Um, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to grab, there's actually a dust plate. It's right there for me. Um, we're going to put this dust plate on first. You don't want to forget that. Um, and then we're going to grab our flywheel and then put the flywheel on. And then there's the drive plate, drive plate, and then we're going to put these six bolts in. All right, guys, so we went ahead and got our flywheel on. As you can see, we put our uh, the drive plate in between these. Um, some people say that this actually doesn't come on some manual transmission cars, um, so it's kind of a 50-50 shot. I'm going to do it anyway, just because that's what the write-up on XenonZcar.com says, um, and that's a pretty good source. So we're going to go ahead and put the drive plate on here. Um, these bolts here are going to be torqued to 72 to 80 foot-pounds, so I'm going to do 75, 76-ish. Um, and it's, these are just 14 millimeter bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on and then we can go ahead and line up our clutch and then put the clutch on. Alright, one thing to mention, when you guys are torquing these down, the crank is actually still going to want to rotate just like when we're taking everything off. Um, so simply just take um, one of your flywheel bolts, stick it right there, uh, bell housing bolt, stick it right there, and stick a wrench in between it. It doesn't really matter. Um, this, these studs kind of get in the way, so just kind of choose it wisely. You can just rotate it really easily um, with your hands. You can just and everything comes off. You know, it's not that much resistance on it right now. Um, but basically just take one there, take one there, stick it in between, um, and it'll stop it from rotating. So I got all these bolted down, now we're going to go ahead and grab our clutch and our clutch alignment tool and stick it on. Alright guys, well here is future Josh coming to you real quick with a word of advice. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about this uh, drive plate over the past couple episodes, um, pulling it off the old transmission and installing it onto our new one, um, but that is all a lie. Uh, you don't actually need this, and if anything, it hurts your engine instead of helps it. Basically, um, what this was used for on the automatic transmission is this uh, flywheel, um, the flex plate is really thin, and so this just kind of helped strengthen it. Um, but on our new one, <laughs> that is not the case. If you have your flywheel, you go and look at it, it's like an inch thick solid steel. So we really don't need it. Um, all it does is take up thread space and uh, pull it out of the uh, crankshaft, so it actually hurts you if you have that in there. So basically, 
don't put that on. Uh, I did, and I had to take everything off and put it back on again. Luckily, I had not installed my transmission yet. Um, but I did have to take off the clutch assembly that I already put on um, and is coming up now for you guys. But basically, just remember, everything you read online is not always true and definitely double check first. Um, so there you go guys, and now you should be installing the rest of the clutch. Alright guys, so as you can see we have our clutch here. Basically what you do is you go ahead and take the clutch and stick it onto your clutch alignment tool. This comes with the kit. You can also buy it separately. I don't know why you would. Um, but basically you just uh, stick this on and then shove it into the pilot bearing. This, uh, the clutch alignment tool goes into the pilot bearing and then you have this clutch plate that sticks onto it. That's very important you get this flat and straight so that your clutch goes on flat. Um, now the only other thing that to remember is that this part that's kind of raised, it goes facing outwards towards the transmission, not the engine. Um, if you put it on upside down, it's going to mess everything up and it's not going to be very happy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the pressure plate and put it on top of this and then bolt the pressure plate down. Now the pressure plate actually does stick into these studs so it won't fall out on you and then you just take your little nuts and you put them in. Alright, so here we have our pressure plate on. We do have six of these bolts in. You may notice there are extra bolt holes. Um, these are actually not used. Um, I've checked a couple different people out and I've asked around. Um, you don't really need them. So as long as you have them, there's like three sections to this. There's this bottom, this one up here, and then that one right there. But as long as you have the outside bolts on each one, you should be fine. And if you notice, each one of these has one of the pegs. Um, and then there will be a peg up there too. Um, so we're going to go ahead and torque these down, I believe it's 17 to 22 foot-pounds. Um, I'm going to do, I don't know, just 20 just because, um, and call it a day for there. Alright guys, so as you can see, the everything is all tightened down and torqued up. Um, we can go ahead and remove this if we want. I'm going to leave this in because it's nighttime, and tomorrow we're going to go put the transmission in. But that's going to happen for you guys right now. We're going to go and put the transmission in. Last thing I wanted to say before we go, make sure when you're tightening these down, you go in a cross pattern. Um, same with the flywheel and the and then the uh, this plate as well. Um, you want to make sure you do it um, so that it torques it down evenly and you get a nice even spread of the pressure. Uh, but let's go ahead and we're going to start installing the transmission. All right, guys. Now that it is a new day and we have our clutch installed, we can go ahead and put in our transmission. So I've had this here for. Uh, about a month now and I went ahead and put a bag over the end just so that dust and stuff didn't get in but basically what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna re-clean all of the uh, components inside here uh, the shaft and everything and um, we're just gonna basically re-lube it up with some nice grease um, the clutch kit did come with some grease for the splines so we might use that might use the royal purple I'll let you guys know what we decide um, but basically then after that we're gonna go ahead and put this back under the car jack it up and basically the hardest part is going to be getting the uh, input shaft. Uh, you can't see it because there's a bag, but there's an input shaft. Um, the hardest part is going to be getting that aligned perfectly so it slides in and doesn't crush it in any weird ways. Um, this is just going to be basically there's two people and uh, we're just going to try real hard to get it in nice and straight. Um, and then once it's in, we'll just go ahead and put, put a couple of these uh, the top top bell housing bolts on and then bolt on the rear cross member. I believe those these ones go to like 38 ish around there plus or minus like five foot pounds of torque. Um, so we're going to go ahead and torque those down as well. And um, we're also going to go ahead and clean out the threads that they go into because this uses a different set of holes than the original transmission did. And so uh, they're a little bit caked up with dirt on my car. So I'm going to go ahead and clean those off real quick before I put them in. Alright guys, I apologize for the lack of filming, but as you can see we have our transmission in. So let me go ahead and kind of run over what we did. Basically we went ahead and just rolled it in here on um, one of our little trays. Um, and we put the back tail end on this jack, and we had the bell housing over here, and then me and a friend lifted up the bell housing, while somebody else simultaneously lifted the jack, um, just so we kind of got it nice and straight. And basically what we did is we went ahead and just kind of shimmied it and jiggled it forward until the uh, pilot bearing was um, on the input shaft correctly, and we went ahead and got these bolts in just to kind of hold it and then finally did these uh, the bell housing bolts up here to just pull the trans forward and we left those ones a little bit loose just to make sure um, that there wasn't any tension on it um, so basically once this was in um, it was just tightening up all these and it did I did find out that uh, two bolts on this side were actually too short um, these little stubs that they thread into um, they're actually a little bit longer on the manual transmission than on the automatic so I'm gonna have to go to the store and buy some 
I do have the two that came out of this, or out of the old one, so I can go ahead and just find the right thread pattern. They're 14 mils. Um, but basically, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and snug up all these bolts once I get these new ones. Um, I did have to take off the trans mount uh, when we rolled it under here just because I didn't have enough space. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and put the grounding strap and the speedometer cable, and eventually we're going to go ahead and bleed this as well. And uh, this is our reverse light right here, um, and we have this bundle of cables. So we're going to figure out which one of those we need and which one of those can go away. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and tighten these bolts up and get new ones um, and we will see what happens after that. Alright guys, now we're going ahead and bolting on like our starter and all of our exhaust components again. Um, basically, what I would recommend is just take a picture of everything before you start, and then that way when you go ahead and do it back again, you can just, you know, look at it where it was. Um, so I'm putting all the dust plates, all the starter, the exhaust components, all of that back together. Um, and the, really the last thing that we need to do uh, pertaining to the swap is actually some wiring. Uh, wiring up here, <laughs> excuse me. So if you come right here, it's our battery tray, um, and you can actually follow some of the lines up. Um, you get right here, and if you can see, um, so you have a main wiring harness, and then out of that sprouts three connectors. And I apologize again, this is actually different. Um, 84 is a different one, 85 and 86 are grouped, and then 87 through 89 are a different group. Um, so I have an 86, so that's what I'm going to be following. I refer you guys to um, the Xenon Z car write-up. I'll go ahead and put a link for that in the description. Um, and basically, depending on what car you have, you're going to be doing slightly different things, I believe. Um, but for mine, I've got an 8-pin connector. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Um, I've got this 8-pin right here um, that I'm going to go ahead and um, do some work on. I believe this is all I need to do. Um, I actually went ahead. Um, so this is, I believe, the inhibitor switch. I believe that's what it's called. Um, so this was on the gear selector, if you remember. It just basically tells the computer what gear it's in. This was connected to the 8-pin. Eight, uh, the eight pin. Um, And then this guy, um, I actually cut this off the transmission, I'll tell you. I'll show you right here. Um, so it went in down here. You can see this loose wire. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that was, um, but whatever it is, I cut it because I didn't know how to get it off, and it was kind of caked in mud anyway. Um, so I have that. That's a four-pin connector. Uh, you can just kind of see just a little basic thing. Um, I don't think we need that, um, and I think what we'll probably do, what we'll probably end up doing, is uh, cutting this harness and then jumping a few wires. Um, but I'll have to double check on that. Um, but again, guys, I just refer you to the Xenon Z car write up because uh, I'm not I'm not an expert on this, and so following that is probably going to be your best bet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and work on mine. Uh, I believe that is the only thing that you needed left to do. Um, again. I'll actually go ahead under here real quick. So here we have our slave cylinder. Um, this is our 240SX conversion line. It didn't quite fit running all the way along the brake lines like I had it before, so I had to cut one end. Um, so it's kind of just resting on top of the transmission now, and it's coming in. Um, so this one, it actually does fit. It wasn't quite long enough before with the past configuration, but it is with this configuration. Um, so that's that. Um, all we need to do is we're going to go ahead and bleed this, uh, bleed the clutch system and everything. Um, this is our reverse gear light right here, or neutral maybe, I forget. I think it's the reverse though. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and this is our drain bolt right here. And then we have a fill bolt on the side and we're going to go ahead and put brand new fluid in this as well. Um, other than that, it's really just reassembly. I'm waiting on an exhaust pipe because um, if you have um, naturally aspirated, you're going to need a new exhaust pipe because this mount here gets in the way of the current or the old exhaust. Um, so you have to get a new one that will bend around that basically. Um, but other than that guys, I think that is it. If I can remember anything else, I'll go ahead and add something right now onto the end of the video. But other than that guys, I hope that you had a great time. I hope this, uh, this was kind of helpful in order for you to see what you needed to do. Um, and I will see you guys later. Drop any comments down below or questions that you have and I'll try to answer them. And as always, go ahead and check out the write-up on uh, the ZGarage.net that I have. Um, and it's basically got a part list of everything that you need so you can go ahead and get it all beforehand so you don't have to wait whole, like three weeks to do it like I did um, collecting a whole bunch of parts. Um, so there you go guys. Uh, if I have anything else, I'll add it here. Um, other than that, I will see you later. Alright guys, one final update, um, hopefully, <laughs> is uh, this is a vacuum line that we took off. Remember when we took our transmission out? Um, it had a bracket that attached to one of the top of the bell housing bolts. Um, basically, you just need to cap this off. This is a quarter inch cap. Uh, it fits right on. I went ahead and just bought uh, an assorted pack like this. 
and it just comes with, you know, a bunch of different sizes. Uh, so, I used the quarter inch vacuum caps, these guys right here, it works perfectly fine. Um, this is great for any other vacuum stuff you have too, just in case you need it for the future. Um, and second to last thing, uh, when you turn your car on, it's going to be about a thousand RPMs higher than it was. So right here we have our throttle body. Um, so there's two ways of adjusting it. One, there's this little screw right here at the bottom. Sorry, let me focus on that for you guys. All right, so if you can see that screw right there, uh, basically this is your throttle and it just it rests on this little tab. Um, now mine, I did have to adjust it a little bit up here at the actual thing. So I put these washers in to pull it back a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to be able to take those out to push it forward. Um, just because, or actually I probably have to move them up a little bit. Anyway, because the throttle is going to need to close because it's open too far right now. Because the system had dragged too much on the old one. So now that we have a clutch and flywheel, there's not going to be as much drag on our transmission. Um, especially when it's out of, out of gear like this. Uh, so basically it's, it's going to idle higher. It's probably going to be around 2,000 RPMs, and we don't want it to be there. So basically just change that idle um, and put on the vacuum cap, and I believe that should be it, guys. All right, that is going to be the last update I give you, and I hopefully will see you later. All right, guys, I wanted to note one thing. Um, so these starter bolts right here and here, um, I had to get new ones of those. These are the M10 by 1.5s, and these are 70 millimeters long. Um, so as you can see, it just barely comes out of the edge there, and just a tiny little bit at the top. Um, so as always, like if you have a parts car that you're swapping it out of, get all the bell housing bolts and get the starter bolts, um, and that you'd be 100% fine if you did that. If not, these ones are 70 millimeters, um, and I believe the ones that go just into the bell housing themselves. I'm sure you could get away with 70 millimeters on some of them, but some of them they don't go all the way through. Um, so 60 or 65 is what I did for those. Um, but on that, guys, I think that is everything. I'm just going to put my exhaust on, and this car is done. All right, guys, I wanted to go ahead and do a little tutorial on uh, basically how to wire it for the 86 um, there's an 85 through 86 model years. Um, so basically these are three transmission um, um, connectors right here. This is an 8 pin, this is a 6 pin, and this is a 4 pin. Um, so this is the 4 pin that was connected to the transmission and I cut. We don't need that. Um, this is the 8 pin. We're going to use this. And then this 6 pin, um, it went to the transmission. It had all of these connectors on it as well. You can see all those right there. Um, and basically, um, we don't need this really. Um, it has an oil pressure sensor uh, boot right there, so if you're using the oil pressure sensor, you're going to want that. Um, but other than that, we don't actually need this. So this is all we need, this 8 pin right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump one wire. Basically, um, the, our transmission has a reverse. This is for a 71C, of course. Um, our transmission has a reverse switch, but it does not have a neutral switch. Um, so this thing, the this gear selector basically, would tell the car when it was in neutral before. Um, and now if we have this unplugged, it won't tell it it's in neutral so it won't want to start. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and bridge two of these wires to make it think that it's in neutral all the time. And if you want to, you can go ahead and wire this to like a switch of some sort interior wise. Um, that way in the future, like it's, it could be like a security thing, like you have to push the switch in order to get it to go. Um, or you can just bridge it and it'll always be active. Um, but other than that, there's two more wires that then go to the reverse light in order to make that turn on. Um, so this is pretty much what we're going to use. Um, but one of the, the reverse light actually does use one of these connectors. So I'm probably going to go ahead and cut off one of these, um, just these round ones here, not the square. Um, and I'm probably going to go ahead and just wire that to this so that we can actually have a nice connector for our reverse light and so we don't have to splice wires all over. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, do a little bit more research and then we'll jump right into that. Alright guys, so we're going ahead and following the Xenon Z car article right here. Um, and in this one it is saying the red black is a ground and in order to start we have to have the black and yellow grounded. Um, so on the very far side of this uh, pin right here you can see there's a red black and then I accidentally cut the uh, yellow black. Um, so basically we need to go ahead and bridge these two in order to get it to start. Um, now also I believe, let me check, they say um, connect the uh, black and red um, as well to the black and white wire. Um, and that is going to give us the uh, reverse switch, um, if I'm right. Let me see. So it says uh, uh, if you connect those two the rever to the reverse switch, um, it will now come on. So basically this uh, black and white is going to be like a uh, power, and then this uh, red and white is going to be a ground again. 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and chop off, um, I think, this connector since it's the longest um, out of here and it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. Um, and basically we're just going to go ahead and connect one of these to the ground, probably the red one, um, and then the other one is going to be to our black and white, which is the power. And that basically means whenever the car is in reverse, um, it's going to go ahead and allow this connection to go through. The power is going to go out of this black one and then ground in the red one, and that's going to turn our tail lights on. Um, so we're going to go ahead, I'm going to chop this up a little bit. Um, you can see I accidentally cut three or four of these wires already, um, but that's okay, we didn't need too long of them. Um, and actually what I'm going to do, um, so when we take our black and yellow and the red and black wire and connect them together, that puts it into neutral. Um, so that would be a normal neutral switch. I'm going to go ahead and actually take it into the cabin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it through the firewall and bring it around over here. And what you can do is you can run it up. Um, you can run it up, so I'm going to probably go under here and then over to this. And then right here, let me show you. Ugh. This is our, these are our mirror controls, and then right here these are just blanks. Um, you can actually put a switch right here in these. Um, you can get one from a stock Z, um, or you can cut a hole in the blank and put a switch in there. I'm going to go ahead and do that, um, so that I can go ahead and have a, just an extra sa added safety feature. So if somebody tries to steal my car, they also have to push this button to start it. Oh, here are the blanks. Um, so you can just go ahead, cut a little hole in that with a, just a regular drill bit, um, and call it a day. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for mine, um, or you can just literally just connect them together. Um, and then as long as you just leave a little bit of space for that uh, reverse switch to go in, um, it'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and wire everything up, and I will get back to you when I've done that. Alright, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys the finished wiring harnesses. Well, finish is a relative term, but here's our 8-pin connector. Um, so I kind of bundle all the wires we're not using out of the way. These are all just solid colors, um, except for this one, which is black and blue. Um, but we have these two right here, the black and white and the black and red. Um, these two are going to go to our neutral, or I mean, our sorry, our reverse switch. So remember, the black and red is the ground, and then this is the power. Um, so when the neutral switch is, or sorry, the reverse switch is engaged, it's going to go ahead and bridge it. Um, and this is the harness that we cut off the other one. Um, this brown wire was spliced, so we're going to go ahead and tape those up, and make sure that there's no um, grounding problems. Um, but basically, the black and white and black and red are going to go ahead and connect to these two wires, just like that. It doesn't matter the direction. And then the other wire we have is this black and yellow. Now this is our neutral switch, and remember I'm putting my switch on the inside where I can go ahead and hold it for a safety feature, or security feature. And um, I'm going to go ahead and ground this inside. So this is a power, and then it's going to ground. Typically what you would do if you're not putting anything in there, you're just going to go ahead and ground it to the red wire. Um, you just bridge those together. So if you're going to splice this in, just splice that in, just kind of like they did that there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and ground this inside so I don't have to run a wire in and then all the way back out. It'll just go in and then ground on the inside. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and splice all these together and uh, put it in the car. Alright guys, here's our final um, new wiring harness. So basically I just kind of put everything into this uh, sheath of sorts. Um, this is going to go to our reverse switch. And then we have this one here that is going to go out to the neutral switch. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and be able to plug this in and this goes right to it. It's actually probably a little bit longer than I needed. I didn't measure it first. Um, so if we need to, we'll just zip tie it up a little bit. Um, but it's better to have it long than too short. So I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and install this and then we're going to work on that button on the inside and then that should finish up this swap, guys. And I'm super excited and super happy. Um, so I will go ahead and give you an update at the end there and that'll be it. All right, guys, so here's the end result. This is our 8-pin connector. The other two we just left off. Um, if you have the oil pressure sender unit, um, I believe it's the 6-pin connector that you're going to want to put back in. Um, but other than that, it's just this 8-pin that we need. Um, I've got them all, you can see, going into this nice little harness right here. Um, and it's going down. I was able to pull this up because it doesn't have to go straight down anymore. And so it's just kind of sitting right here. That way I can get easy access if I ever need to work on it right now. Um, this one goes into the cabin. There is a uh, little... Let's see. All right, well, it's a little bit hard to see, but basically if you kind of find your AC lines and then go down right there, there is a uh, fire uh, hole in the firewall that's got rubber grommet in it. Um, and basically you can just go ahead and use that to get your line into the cabin if you need. Um, so there's that. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like underneath. Okay, so here we are under the car. Um, you can see our line kind of comes down right there and then just comes in and connects right here. And it's really nice. I went ahead, this alternator bracket, or sorry, starter bracket, um, went ahead and just zip tied it to that. The old one did go into there, 
Um, I just <laughs> I didn't like those old clips. They're the worst. Um, and in order to get off, I had to clip, clip them. But basically, it's zip tied through there, um, and you can see it looks all great. Um, so there you go guys, I hope that, I'm going to go ahead and test this, always test it and make sure it works, um, put it into reverse, make sure your reverse lights come on, um, if you put in a neutral safety switch that you have to push it, go ahead and try turning it on without it, and then try turning it on with it, hopefully it'll work um, if you do turn it on with it, um, but there you go guys, if you have any questions about what I did here, go ahead and drop a comment down below as well. One quick amendment guys, I went ahead and routed the reverse light up here, there's like a little tie down, um, it just bends, it's metal, um, and basically the only reason you would do that is just in case you get a stick or anything that comes under your car, it doesn't grab it and try to pull it off. Um, so that just kind of goes up over, I was able to slip it, it's still tied down here with the zip tie, and it's up there, there. Um, I might put something else stronger up here just in case to make sure, um, but that it should be it, I'll see you guys later.